Mark with the River Hawk Company. Today we're going to talk about the diaphragm coupling in turbo machinery applications. There is criteria that you can use to determine whether or not to continue running your diaphragm coupling, replace the diaphragm coupling, or just have it repaired. The customers that we support are using the diaphragm coupling in turbo machinery applications. The diaphragm coupling is used to transmit the power from the turbine to whatever the accessory may be, a compressor, a gearbox, a whole train of couplings. So there's very good information that we would like to share on the criteria used to determine whether or not that coupling should be removed and replaced, repaired, or just continued running. The easiest determination of the diaphragm coupling to continue running is the fact that you don't have a spare coupling. The first example that I have for you today is a diaphragm coupling that we are repairing here at Riverhawk. I will be able to show you key things to look at while you're in the field on this coupling to make your determination to continue running. The first example I have in front of you now is a diaphragm coupling that we are repairing for our customer. The view that you're looking at is the diaphragm profile. This is a very critical area to do your visual inspection of in the field to make sure there's no dent, ding, or scratches in this profile area. The profile is a high stress portion of the diaphragm coupling and any damage to that profile will limit the capability of the coupling. So a very good visual inspection needs to be done in order to determine if you can continue running. The next step in your visual inspection process will be to check the length of the coupling. In order to check the length, you want to look on the guard. On the OD of the guard, this area that you see that I'm pointing out right now, has the part number as well as the length when it left the original equipment manufacturer. That length now you can use to confirm the length of the coupling. If there's any change in that length, that is a sign something has gone wrong. Either something's beginning to fail, or it has seen significant misalignments that has deformed the coupling. This would be a determination to not run this coupling if you saw a difference. Another part of the visual inspection is the bolt holes. Bolt hole damage can be done with the bolts running loose in the coupling and can deform the holes. What you see on the screen now is some images of damaged bolt holes. They can get oblonged or severely corroded. Either of those are going to be determinations of whether or not you can continue to run the coupling. An oblong bolt hole that you see is not going to allow the coupling to be securely fastened and needs to be replaced. Corrosion can usually be cleaned up because you're going to use shims in the coupling to adjust the length. So there's some machining that can be done to remove that corrosion. Along with the bolt holes, you also want to check the actual bolts, the hardware fastening the coupling to your hubs, to your machinery. What we have here is hardware from a coupling. A key thing to look at on your hardware is how the nut fits to the bolt. These are self-locking nuts. After 10 uses, you will begin to lose the self-locking feature. A very quick way of checking the hardware is to take the nut, thread it onto the bolt. Within two, three turns, it'll get tight and you won't be able to turn it. If you can turn the nut all the way onto the bolt, it is now no good. It definitely needs to be replaced. Some other things with the hardware, corrosion that you'll see on it, that would be a requirement to replace it. Sometimes you see a step in the body area of the bolt that would require a replacement. Generally in all repair couplings, new hardware will be installed. What we just went over was good information to look at to determine the capability to keep running your coupling. There is going to be criteria that you need to replace the coupling. Obviously, if there's a catastrophic failure, the diaphragm is completely fractured, as you see on my screen here. That is simple to say, we can no longer run. It won't transmit torque, it won't operate, it needs to be replaced. Those type of failures are very easy to determine. Other than that, the coupling is going to come back to a repair facility for them to determine if it needs to be repaired. 
So the next component to talk about is when to repair the coupling. This determination usually is very simple when you have a spare coupling. So when you go into a turnaround, you can take the coupling off and send it to a repair facility for them to make the determination of what needs to be done for the repair, how long the repair will take, and the ability to get it back to you in a timely fashion. Because you have a spare coupling, you can replace the coupling that was running and have it repaired. The benefits of a spare coupling is it allows faster return to full operation if there was a catastrophic failure. You would take your spare coupling off the shelf, install it, and you'd be able to continue running. But it also allows you the capability to send that spare coupling to a manufacturer to repair it versus having to make the determination as we just went over to continue running it. When a coupling is sent back for repair to a facility, the first thing that's going to be done is a visual inspection. First look of the coupling can tell us what the coupling has seen. The paint on the coupling has been used for many years to see just what has happened from a temperature standpoint. When you see a coupling with no paint, as you see on my screen here, it saw significant heat to burn the paint off. In some cases, it's just turned black, maybe slightly, slightly brown. Our images that you see on my screen that show us just what the environment was the coupling was exposed to. After looking at the paint condition, the next thing to look at is your flange mating surfaces. A lot of times these will be severely corroded. Corrosion is tolerable to a certain point because it can be machined off. The length will slightly change, but shim packs of the coupling allow for adjustment of that change. If the corrosion is too severe, the coupling will have to be replaced because it's a one-piece welded construction. Another component of the visual inspection will be the actual diaphragm profile. What you see in front of you now is a diaphragm coupling we have received in to repair. The paint has been stripped off and it has been recoated. So when we first got it in, there was scratches, minor scratches, and slight damage to the profile. We remove all of the coatings to confirm, to show there's no damage into the base metal of the diaphragm profile. One thing to look at specifically on a diaphragm coupling is the guard, the windage lip area. What you see here, this windage lip, is often uh, bent, damaged, dinged up from just general handling of the coupling. Just as you see the coupling sitting here, it's sitting on those windage lips. It's sitting on the edge of that guard. So in many cases, that can be damaged and needs to be evaluated to confirm it's repairable. One of the difficulties with this one-piece welded construction is if that guard is damaged and needs to be replaced, the whole coupling is going to be replaced. What we have here is the Riverhawk coupling. A significant advantage of the Riverhawk coupling is if the guard gets damaged, it can be removed because Riverhawk uses a proprietary spline feature that connects the flange and diaphragm versus the electron beam welding. So if the guard is damaged, you can disassemble the coupling, remove the guard, install a new guard, and have the same coupling versus doing a complete replacement of the coupling. The next component of the visual inspection will be the hub, or I mean the flanges. What you see on my screen is a significantly damaged hub. Obviously this hub spun or saw something go wrong to put that type of damage in the bore. What we have here is another hub that came in for repair. Beyond the bore that I just talked about inspecting is also the outside of the hub. This area that you see right here is the balance journal of the hub. If this has been significantly damaged, sometimes pipe wrenches, uh, this will see a lot of damage that won't allow the balance journal to be used. In many cases that balance journal can be machined down to allow reuse of the hub because it's just the OD of the hub. However, corrosion outside the balance area, the balance journal area, will determine whether or not the coupling can be used. The bolt holes, the windage lip that you see here, if that has been heavily corroded, as you see in this hub in front of you, it would be scrapped. So now you know the basic 
steps of a visual inspection at the repair facility. Based on that visual inspection, we're going to come up with the repair process procedure that will need to be done on the coupling. The first step of the repair process is to clean and blast the coupling. As you saw earlier, the paint, the outside of the coupling, can be very dirty, corroded, or damaged to the paint. The blasting and the cleaning is going to bring it to a point where we can do a much better visual inspection. What you see on my screen right now is a coupling that has been blasted and cleaned up. This will allow a good visual and dimensional inspection of the coupling. After the visual and dimensional inspection, the coupling will go for NDT inspection. The NDT inspection is critical on a one-piece welded coupling to check the diaphragm welded area, as well as the diaphragm profile. All torque transmission parts will receive some sort of NDT inspection. Once the NDT inspection is done, the next process will be to balance the coupling. What you see on my screen is the Riverhawk state-of-the-art balance equipment. These are Hoffman balance machines. There's a vertical balance to do the component, and then horizontal balance to do the complete assembly. After the balance is done, the coupling will be cleaned and prepped for its base corrosion preventative coating. After that, it will be painted. What you see on my screen now is a picture of the coupling with the base coating, and then to the right with the final top coating. A refurbished coupling will leave the repair facility looking in the as-new condition. Along with that, will be documentation showing all of the repair process that was done. Photographs, documentation of the NDT inspections, balance records, everything showing just what was done to the repair process. The final step of the refurbishment process is actually packaging the coupling for shipment back to the owner. This is critical because an improperly packaged coupling can get damaged in transition. What you see on my screen now is how Riverhawk packages the coupling to ensure safe travel back to the owner. Some of the specifics that go into packaging the coupling is the barrier paper to protect the coating of, that was applied to the coupling, as well as individual compartments that keep the components from bumping into each other during shipment. In conclusion, what we went over today was basic steps for you to do a visual inspection in the field to determine if you can actually run the coupling. We also gave some specifics on the coupling being too damaged for repair and need replacement and highlights of the actual repair process. Some of the benefits of sending your diaphragm coupling to Riverhawk for repair is Riverhawk has the most experienced and qualified engineers of the diaphragm coupling. There's also a significant cost savings and time savings 